Welcome to the Michael Nankung Encounter. It was about one year ago when I heard the news that my friend, Azif Farouk, had passed away. It was about six years ago when I first met Azif, right around the midpoint of what was to become a decade-long project for him. When I walked into the warehouse that he had made into his workshop, I could hardly comprehend what I saw. He was building a paper airplane. Not the kind we all made as kids, but a full-scale, Cold War-era Soviet reconnaissance jet fighter. A MiG-21, made completely of paper and glue. And he called this plane Balalaika, which is the nickname that the Soviet pilots gave it because of its distinctive triangular wing configuration that resembled a balalaika, a lute-like Russian stringed instrument. He gave me a guided tour of the plane and walked me around it while removing panels here and there to let me look inside the fuselage. The cockpit was completely mesmerizing. Every switch and dial and every detail was there, down to the exact shape and position of each screw head. He showed me the jet engine, the control panels, various hoses, and even the pilot's helmet. He was taking everything apart to show me how meticulously it was all assembled. Every wire and every nut and bolt, every transistor and rivet, Over 300,000 individual and functional movable parts, the vast majority of which in the end would not even be visible. They'd be hidden in the guts of the plane. Now, at this point in the story, with my imagination completely immersed and lost in these spectacular details, a question came into my head that seemed entirely logical, the very same question that countless people had already asked him before me. I'd lost my bearings on reality just long enough to feel that I wasn't too old or too cool to believe in something totally unbelievable. And so I asked him, will it fly? As if once told me that the truth of your character is revealed by what you do in the dark, in the places that others don't see, when no one's watching. So much of who we are and so much of what happens is invisible. You don't get to see the hundreds of thousands of parts that make up this paper airplane. Just like you can't see the utter despair someone is in, or see how deep his desire to follow a dream, to create something beautiful, even when it seems impossible. And then I learned that he was building his plane not at a one-to-one scale, but just a hair's breadth larger, at 1 to 1.0588 scale, to account for the fact that his body was just that slightly larger than the average Slavic pilot of the 1950s for whom the airplane was designed. And this airplane was already brilliant and mesmerizing and beautiful, but the fact that he went to these great lengths to make these minute, almost infinitesimal adjustments to make this incredibly complex object that fit his body frame so that it would feel just right when he sat in the cockpit. In my mind, this was poetry. It wasn't any paper airplane. It wasn't any MiG-21. It was his MiG-21. His paper airplane. And this is what made it every child's airplane. He was working in the same spirit of every child who folds a paper airplane in order to feel that satisfaction of making something, and then the thrill of flying it out into the world, to feel that intimate sensation of how it leaves your hand and soars through the air. Children are naturally connected to the beauty of the world, and they actively participate in it. They make things for the joy and the delight of their own experience. And seeing as if work helped me to see 
and to begin to honor the childlike wonder that was still alive in me, the inner voice that had become disconnected from the joys and the delights of being fully alive in the world. When I stood in front of this airplane, I somehow knew that I hadn't been dreaming large enough to satisfy the power and the desire that was very much alive in my own imagination. I wrote this piece in his memory. How to make a paper airplane. With care of edge and affection of fold, a balancing nestled in your hands. With wit, quick wrist, and flick of finger, awaiting to hear a sound that lands. With neatly folded paper sheet, creased and cantilevered with care, with faith you fell in its dim corners and stayed until you saw it there. The secret code the darkness revealed to dream a dream, towering and true. The angels rejoiced through open the heavens and into the summoning sky you flew. May a desire for higher forms enliven in me what I chose to hide, a prayer to open what I closely clutch to endear me to the child inside, to the one who seeks the perfect vehicle with eyes that grow more keen to see and toss aside at last the ones whose corners won't line up for me. Where are my wings, the ones that ring with magic enfolded and custom made, molded to contours of my constitution, to wrap my body when I am afraid? Where are my quills, the ones instilled to feather my faith and hoist me high, and enable my hand to write these words across a beckoning paper sky. Whenever people asked him when he would finish it, he always said that he was about six months away. After hearing this many times, I realized that his about six months away line seemed to be a way for him to stay in the work, a way for him to slow down time. And he actually went back to square one and started over many times because it wasn't measuring up to the best he could do. And it didn't feel quite right yet for him. It seemed that about six months became a way for him to keep the work alive. And maybe even himself. The last few times I spoke with him, I was surprised to hear him say that he was just a few months away from finishing. And then, after that, a few weeks away. Not long after that, he passed away. He'd used hundreds of thousands of pieces of paper, but his desire was equal to the desire of a child who finds shelter from the eyes of the world, who immerses herself in her work, and who makes a paper airplane from a single sheet of paper. The impulse is the same as the child who holds her creation in her hand, feels its weight, and launches it into the air, and watches it fly, and with bated breath, waits for it to land. I'm thinking about another piece that I also wrote last summer. Slow Down Time One afternoon, in the blue sky heat of June, my daughter and I sat together on the front porch with a stack of printer paper, folding the blank white sheets into paper airplanes. As I made them, I lazily threw them over the lawn. But my daughter had a grander vision. She was running a production line, stockpiling hers on the concrete between us in neat rows, self-aware enough to know that after feeling the thrill of throwing her first one, She'd want more at the ready. She was immersed. I watched her practice folds of intense concentration. She lined up the corners as best she could and tossed aside the ones that didn't measure up to her standard. 
finding her own balance between making them fast and making them well. When she had amassed a small squadron, she stood up and began to throw them across the lawn, one by one, with a smile that stretched across her face. She launches each one into the air like she's flicking a magic wand, as if she's watching her imagination take flight on the wings of a beautiful paper bird. And with bated breath and her hands suspended in the air as if she's bidding it farewell, slows down time, and waits for it to land. It reminds me of our weekly parting ritual, when her mother comes to pick up the children. As the car pulls away, she waves vigorously at me, her head sticking out the backseat window until I'm out of sight. She's different from her brother. He says goodbye and is gone. With her, it's... When will we see you again? She looks back for as long as she can. I stand on the porch and wave back, my hand outstretched, not knowing I'm holding my breath, not knowing now I'm trying to slow down time. I wait for her to disappear from my field of view before slowly dropping my hand. She picks up another and another, each time calling out, Watch, Daddy, watch. We watched how far they would go, and we cheered when one of us surpassed our last best throw. We tried to play catch with them, though we hardly caught any. When we got tired of that, we goaded the cat to chase them down. The world was wide open. We delighted in the ways they would swoop and soar, ever surprised by their unexpected turns, how they moved like dreams, being pushed by invisible forces and traveling on a trajectory of their own accord. Before long, the lawn was littered with dozens of airplanes, some resting askew on their bellies, some on their backs, some planted in clumps of thick grass with their noses crushed from crash landing, while their tails stood up like bright, white, rectilinear lilies gleaming in the sun. When my children leave, the quiet that floods into the house is jarring. I am aware of the many things to be done, but my mind goes blank. I am unmoored. I reach for the laundry and begin to fold. I line up the corners as best I can, but I am unfocused, doing it more fast than well. The floor will be swept, the toys will be put away. I gather up the planes left abandoned on the lawn and in the living room and brush off bits of dirt and grass. I squeeze them into a neat stack and unconsciously line up the corners in my hands. I pause. I feel myself being pushed by invisible forces. This is the part when my own reluctance to let go of the winged creature she's becoming, begins to land in the corners of my eyes. And then I think, I'm not much different today from when I was her age, alone and crying. I walk over to the recycling bin, airplanes in hand. It's already full. I need to take it out, but I don't. I squeeze them tight and shove them in. What kind of paper airplane are you folding that allows you to live the dream that you want to unfold? What's your own version of the question, will it fly? It doesn't matter if what you're building ever leaves the ground and takes flight. Because when you're building it, you've already answered the question. If you'd like to read a transcript of this week's episode, or to get the podcast delivered straight to your inbox, go to michaelnamkung.com or click on the link in the show notes. If you enjoyed this episode, 
consider going deeper with the Encounter subscription and get access to premium episodes and other subscriber-only content.